sound played back. Inventor Thomas Edison had read about Edward Leon Scott de Martinsville finding an autograph in the first sound recording. Edison, ever curious, started experimenting with a machine that was able to make faint sounds from indents in the paper when he said hello. He was working on improvements for the telegraph and telephone, but then his imagination made a leap. Could he make the captured sound play back louder? Edison handed a rough draft of a new talking machine to his engineer who laughed at his drawing. When he completed, Edison spoke into a horn and the sound waves vibrated the attached needle, creating indents in a covered tinfoil cylinder. Then the reverse was done. The needle traveled over the tinfoil indents and the sound came out of the horn. The first captured and playback sounds were from a familiar nursery rhyme. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. The uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. The ghostly machine talks. On a cold December day in 1877, Thomas Edison publicly displayed the phonograph at the New York Times newspaper office. The phonograph, also called a talking machine, seemed like magic from the Wizard of Menlo Park. The experience was so new and startling, a witness wrote, It is impossible to listen to the mechanical speech without experiencing the idea that his senses are deceiving him. On the evening of April 18, 1878, Edison was invited to the White House with his new talking machine. He played the machine for President Rufford B. Hayes and friends. President Hayes enjoyed it so much, he woke his wife up to listen. It was after 2 a.m. before Edison left. Edison later recalled the disbelief. Some of them couldn't believe it was a machine that talked. I let them make records themselves and hear their own voices. That convinced them. But they still couldn't understand it. There seemed to be something uncanny, supernatural, ghostly almost, about it. Thomas Edison, Muncie Magazine, 1910.